Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. So as the title says, today ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and unbox my payday prep. And uh, I have a little surprise actually, well, not really a surprise for me, but... Uh, so when you guys saw me go through my payday prep from my Amazon order, I actually ordered more things than what that list said. Uh, after I finished the video and premiered it, I thought to myself, I thought I ordered more than that. And you all know I'm pretty senile. So I, I went back and checked and I was like, well, no doubt I did. I ordered a lot more stuff than what I put out on that video. So I'm going to show you all what I what I got. In addition to that, I wanted to read to you a couple of very short articles, all right, that I think you're really going to enjoy or get a lot out of, all right? And also, I wanted to make a correction to the last video I put up in reference to the potato uh, flakes or the potato shreds, the dehydrated potato shreds. So I made a mistake on that video. When I said 22 pounds worth of potato shreds, I was wrong. I was thinking about this cornmeal that I ordered. This is a 22 pound bucket of cornmeal, okay? The potato shreds come in a seven pound bucket. It's just like this, but they only fit seven pounds in it because the potato shreds have so much volume and very little weight. So when I said that it's more cost effective to buy your potato shreds from Oxen Farms, I was wrong, all right? It's a lot more cost effective, at least for me and for where I'm at and what I pay for them at Costco's. It's a lot more cost effective for me to buy them from Costco's and, and spend the money on the bucket and the Mylar bag and pack it myself. Uh, it's probably about, it's probably a little less than half of $40 for me to pack the same amount of potato shreds than if I were to buy it from Oxen, okay? So if you have uh, a Sam's Club or a Costco near you or a place where it's like a warehouse bulk food store, you're probably going to be better off buying it from there. But just do your homework and check and see uh, what's easier for you to do and what's more cost effective for you for your area, okay? So let's go ahead and start off with the first thing. Here's the uh, cornmeal. I got a 22-pound bucket of that cornmeal. And I have kind of a beef with uh, the delivery. These uh, Amazon or UPS, usually whenever they deliver my Amazon packages, they bring it all the way up to the porch and leave it on my front deck. And today, for some reason, they just left it all in the front of my driveway, right, on, right in the snow. And so if it would have been snowing today, it would have probably been covered in snow and I wouldn't have noticed that it was there because we have so much snow. So that's the only beef so far. I haven't unpacked everything, so we'll see what else we got. All right, but let's start it off, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the second thing we got here is some, uh, I've never tried this, so I'm definitely going to be reviewing this. It's some Oxen Farms Nacho Cheese uh, Powder. So you're supposed to go ahead and uh, blend this with probably water. I haven't looked at the instructions, but it's supposed to make some nacho cheese uh, sauce. So that'll be interesting. This is one of the things I'll be reviewing. Okay, and I, I do believe that I got two of those. Let me find the other one. Yep, I did get two of those. And it says there that it comes with 79 servings. So that's not a bad deal. This is another thing I'm going to be reviewing. Is the uh, Oxen Farms uh, bread and roll mix. And it's uh, honey wheat. Okay. And some people may say that. Why don't you just store your own wheat berries and grind them? Well, I do. But some people may not be able to do that. Okay. And uh, this is a pretty good option, I think. I got four of these because I'm pretty sure I'm going to like these, okay, because I really like bread, making bread and I really like bread and I can always doctor this up by putting a little bit of butter on it or whatever, but I'm definitely going to review this with you guys so that you guys can see uh, what the process is for preparing this and uh, I can do a flavor test or a taste test and let you guys know what I think, all right? So I got four of those. Let's see, where's the other one? Here's the other one. And another one over here. And I'm missing one. Oh, the other, my camera is sitting on top of the other one. <laughs> okay, and look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Big old dent. So I guess this is the one that I'm going to be opening up when I review this. So I got four of these. Right now my camera is on top of the other one. Okay, I got one of these. I'm not going to be reviewing this one right here. This is a Kobe Jack Shutter or a Kobe Cheese. All right. I've reviewed these freeze-dried cheeses before. I think a, a while back, a video a long time ago. 
But uh, all, all this is is just cheese that's dehydrated or freeze-dried. And all you got to do is just uh, rehydrate it. And it's just cheese, okay? So if you like uh, Kobe cheese, you'll like this because that's what it is. Just freeze-dried. So I got one of those. You all know that I love this product. This is probably one of the products that I use the most. Between this and the pepper flakes is products that I use the most. So I got four of these. And they weren't on sale either. But I've noticed that the prices are going up on things. So I wanted to get some of these. Because one of these right here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, if you have not tried these, try one. Just get one and try it because this is an outstanding product and I think that it is extremely cost effective when you compare it to spaghetti sauce or tomato paste or anything like that it's a great product I recommend it highly alright so I ended up getting four of those okay this is something I haven't tried before this uh, vegetable stew blend right and the reason I'm trying this is because I use I use uh, frozen mixed vegetables a lot, you know, to make my dishes with, especially my Dominican rice. And uh, I was thinking that maybe it would be a lot easier and more cost effective to use this instead, uh, you know, instead of having to buy a few bags of frozen mixed vegetables, you know, every other week or every month and keep it in the freezer. All I got to do is just keep this right here. And uh, scoop out whatever I need, put the lid back on, and it's good to go. And I don't have to worry about it getting freezer burned or anything like that. So I'm going to definitely give this a try. I'm going to review this for you guys so you guys can see what this is like. All right, now stand by. I got I have to open my... I think I've only got one box left to open. Yep, sure do. So stand by, ladies and gentlemen. I'm opening this box right quick. And then we're almost done with unboxing all this stuff. Let's see how they did on this one. Okay, what else we got here? Okay, so I got some, some honey cornbread muffin mix. Okay, I'll definitely be reviewing this one. Right, because I really like cornbread. I mean corn muffins or cornbread. And uh, everyone in my family likes this. So we'll definitely be doing a review on this one. I think I got two of those. Yep, sure did. Got two of those. And then, last but not least, this is going to be the first item I review, right, by popular demand. This is going to be the black bean burger mix. And I got four of these, okay? And I've got some tricks up my sleeve with this one, so don't miss this review because I've got some things that I'm going to do with this uh, besides just follow the instructions. So I got four of these right here. Here's number two. Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. My arm is, my left arm is killing me right now. I, uh, I just got out of physical therapy. And it's not fun, but it's working. I can tell you that right now, ladies and gentlemen. Physical therapy is working. I mean, my arm is getting a little stronger. It's getting a little better, but it still hurts quite a bit. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That right there is the unboxing of that payday prep that I went over with you guys so now what I want to do ladies and gentlemen real quick I want to go over an article that I ran ran into and the and the title of the article is it's from New Times from Miami New Times so I'm not sure if I'll be able to save this link because I'm not on the computer that I normally use to upload stuff but if I can, I'll make sure that I put the links in the bottom of the description uh, like I usually do for links, okay? So, the title is Top 5 Foods That Never Spoil, Rot, or Expire, okay? And number 5, I'm not sure if they're serious about this or not, but number 5 is Twinkies, okay? Uh, I don't think they're serious about this one, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. The other 4... Uh, are have a lot of validity behind them right makes a lot of sense why they last forever and they actually have historical facts to back it up okay but the, number five is Twinkies and it says legend has it that 
If there were a nuclear apocalypse, only Twinkies and roaches would survive. Last year, we ate 1987... Oh, sorry. Last year, we ate a 1987 Twinkie we found behind the hot dog counter at the corner store. We were sweeping, and it was delicious. Wow. So these guys are saying that they ate a Twinkie that was roughly 30 years old. Yeah, about 30 years old, 32 years old, and it was still good. So uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really going to be prepping Twinkies, okay? <laughs> All right, number four makes a lot of sense, soy sauce, okay? So they say that soy sauce is one of the foods that, that pretty much lasts forever. And it says, see the label on, soy, on that soy sauce? It says, since 1645. We guarantee you that somewhere in the remote Japanese countryside, there is, a, there is the skeleton of an ancient warrior with a sword in one hand and a glass container of soy sauce in the other. And you could dunk your dumpling in there and it'd still be good. And I've heard that about soy sauce, that soy sauce will pretty much last indefinitely because it's pretty much just salt. It's salt with fermented uh, beans, I believe it is. Okay. Number three makes a lot of sense. Sugar. Right. If kept dry, sugar will last forever. You know that you know that big jar of it that your grandma hasn't been able to unscrew the top off uh, in 68 years. Still edible. Uh, that packet that has been at the bottom of your purse since eighth grade. Still good. That bag in the freezer uh, that's been there your whole life is still good. And and as far as I know, sugar will last indefinitely. All right. As long as you store it correctly. Number two, I was surprised with number two. Number two is ghee, all right? Uh, so the clarified butter, the ones that you see me uh, make and, and pressure cook uh, the other day. Actually, no, wait, you, oh man, I just did a spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, darn it. I, uh, I have a video coming up on how to prepare ghee. <laughs> man, and I'm not gonna edit this out either. So spoiler alert, there you go, guys. Be looking out for a video that I'm gonna put out on how to prepare ghee from from butter to ghee to pressure canning it and everything okay it's it's a really good video it's actually it actually came out pretty well okay so look out for that so anyways ghee ghee is a type of clarified butter invented and used mostly in south asian countries such as india and bangladesh it is made through boiling and stirring butter until the water has evaporated and all that's left are solids at the bottom and clarified butter at the top the two are separated, and then the ghee gets jarred and sealed. When made correctly, it needs no refrigeration and lasts hundreds of years. It has been found still edible in tombs. Ghee is very popular around the world for daily cooking use. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an outstanding source of fat for you to store for long-term storage. Because according to this, uh, people have eaten ghee that were hundreds hundreds of years old and it was still good and edible okay and the number one thing you can all probably guess what it is is honey all right so honey is the number one thing that they say lasts forever and it says here uh let me see from the dusty depths of king tut's tomb to a fallen vikings knapsack to an oklahoma supermarket nobody has shopped at since 1950 uh honey Wherever you find it does not spoil. It might crystallize over time, but just run the jar under some hot water and it'll magically go back to that sticky golden syrup. All right? If ancient cave paintings are to be believed, humans have been hunting honey for as many as 10,000 years. Okay, so that's good to know. Now, I wanted to give you guys a quick history of what ghee is, okay? So for those of you that don't know, and like I said, be on the lookout for my video that I'm doing this week uh, about ghee. Actually, it's going to premiere on Saturday, okay? So Saturday's premiere is going to be about me uh, making ghee and jarring ghee, okay? So the history of ghee, it says ghee isn't just butter. It's loaded with vitamins A and E, but more importantly, it keeps at room temperature, I also, it doesn't say this right here, or it does, it says it down below, so I'm not going to say it again, okay? So, 
Our heroes, and they're calling them heroes because they invented ghee, our heroes discovered butter probably by accident while hauling milk around in skin bags in Central Asia. Uh, churns are invented, butter becomes a thing, say thanks to yaks, goats, and cows. So this article is saying that the way that butter was invented was by people who were carrying whole milk in leather sacks. Uh, as they were carrying it, the milk was churning in there and little clumps of butter appeared. And since then, they uh, invented churns and started churning their own butters. Okay. Now, it says here that southern India was hot. Butter had to be stabilized for storage and use in hot weather. Clarification was the answer. And from that came ghee. Now, it says here that, ki that ghee fights inflammation. It lowers cholesterol in some uh, lab studies. It's extremely low in lactose and casein. And it contains vitamins A, E, and K2. It is rich is a rich source of CLA, which is a metabolism regulating uh, micronutrient and has a high smoke, pin, smoke point and a nutty, delicious flavor. And that's one of the things that ghee is good for is that it has a high smoke point so you can fry with it without it burning. All right. And it does have, I can tell you from experience, it does have, have a very nutty and very good flavor. And it goes a long way when you compare it to butter. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got for you this time. I don't know how long this video went, but hopefully it didn't go on too long. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and put a link for all of these items in uh, my description. All right. So if you want to check any of these items out, please use my link because, as you know, it does help to support the channel. Okay, and I want to thank all of you for all of your support. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I can't say that enough. If you think I say it too much, uh, I apologize, but I can't say it enough because I truly do appreciate your guys' support. Uh, with what you guys do is how I'm able to do this and do giveaways and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I hope you got something out of this. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and post this probably for Friday morning. And I hope you guys had a good week so far and happy Friday to all of you. And I hope that I see many of you tomorrow during our premiere uh, live chat at 0, 0, 0800, so 8 a.m. Saturday morning, Alaska time. So set your alarm clocks, ladies and gentlemen, and join in because we always have a great time during our premiere live chats, all right? Very good time chatting with all of you. All right, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please share it. OK, uh, I'd appreciate that and uh, send this or share this with someone that you love. Hopefully they'll be able to get into prepping and find it a little bit exciting and not only exciting, but necessary. Hopefully they'll find a way to see the necessity of prepping through watching some of my videos and not only my videos, but send them to other prepper channels as well. Whatever it takes to wake them up, please do that. OK, remember, it's not a competition. Uh, I hope that. There's a million prepper channels out there so that more people can uh, be woken up to the idea and the fact that we do need to be prepping. So having said that, remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I'm out.